entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Okay, okay, okay. Trey Six Hundo. Three Six Double O. Let's go, y'all. Y'all know what's going on, man. Trace 600, 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 is an American rapper born in Houston, Texas on November 18th, 1981. Let's bring it back to the beginning. Mike Jones is from the north side of Houston, Studywood in North Maine to be exact. Originally, Mike Jones said he wanted to be a hooper. He did, you know, he grew up wanting to play professional basketball, but basically that didn't pan out for him and he ended up dropping out of high school. In his early life, he transferred from school to school many times, forcing him to only play in the YMCA leagues. But after ninth grade, Jones dropped out of Booker T. Washington High School, which is another school on the north side of Houston. So Mike Jones was working at fast food restaurants you know what I'm saying, to make a living and to get by until he landed a job at the compact plant. Mike Jones would take the phones and he would sell them out of an apartment on Antoine Drive. Yeah, T. Brown, Jones' partner in several financial ventures, said that he sold some dime bags for six months, but the two mainly bought T-Mobile sidekicks and sold them for an inexpensive price. Jones often visited his grandmother's house in the Studiowood area and he credits her for giving him the ideas to pursue rap, to use his real name, and to write songs for the strippers. His early music career began even way before Swisher House. Jones was in a group called South Folk and was using the alias Sachi. He released one album with South Folk called Country Thuggin' in 2001. And then Jones went on to form his own independent record label called Ice Age Entertainment and began solo rapping. He independently promoted and distributed his music on the streets and pressed it on DJs and strip clubs. Jones eventually signed to the upcoming Southern record label Swisher House after meeting with Swisher House and RT Fairs. And at that time, Swisher House was signing others like Paul Wall, Slim Thug, Chameleon Air. They had Lil Mario, 5050 Twin, Swisher House 214. Ferris recalls signing. And Jones saying that he heard him on one of his partner's mixtapes and he wanted him on theirs, so they linked up and they signed him. DJ Casual from Meridian, Mississippi was one of the first people to play Jones on the radio and he loved what Jones was doing and he passed it on to several of his DJs. Mike Jones started building his buzz in Houston around 2003, dropping mixtape Ballin' Underground. The other thing that really started giving him his buzz was the who? Mike Jones, who? Mike Jones, who? Mike Jones. Who is Mike Jones? Who is Mike Jones? Who is Mike Jones? That album. And passing out his phone number 281 330 8004. Which, that wasn't the original phone number that he put out, but for the purposes of the world knowing, that's the number that he went by, which no other artist was actually doing at the time. Mike Jones was the first to actually do this. If you ask me, I think that Mike Jones made a lot of motivational music. Granted that he did do a lot of the slab talk and the, the diamonds, the bling bling, and you know, stuff like that, to, you know what I'm saying? Because Mike Jones is from the North Side. Swisher House is a cast of dudes from the North Side. Mike Jones repped Studiowood, North Main. On a lot of his projects in his early career, you can hear him repping Studiowood in North Main. But yeah, he embraced the culture of Houston being on Swisher House, which is the North Side counterpart to Houston's screwed up click. You know what I'm saying? So Mike Jones dropped the Ballin' Underground mixtape, which was 40 plus songs and a DVD. You know what I'm saying? Which was real monumental at that time. You know, he got, he, he was able to lure the fans in. Like personally, I consider Mike Jones music to be motivational. He had catchphrases such as, you don't work, you don't eat, you don't grind, you don't shine. If you don't work, you don't eat, you don't grind, you don't shine. No if, ands, or buzz bottom. Or 90% grind, 10% sleep. 
You know what I'm saying? So this is the rise and fall of Mike Jones. And he reached national fame in 2004 on the Swisher House release of his breakout single, Still Tipping, which featured Slim Thug and Paul Wall. Let's put it on, we on the grind. We got some CDs, give it out. Oh. Still Tipping peaked at number 60 on the Billboard Hot 100. Jones subsequently released the single Back Then, which peaked at number 22 on the Billboard. Back then they didn't want me, now I'm hot, they all know me. Back then they didn't want me, now I'm hot, they all know me. Still Tipping and Back Then acted as singles for his debut studio album, Who Is Mike Jones, which was finally released on April 19, 2005 which peaked at number three on the U.S. Billboard Top 200 charts and is certified platinum by the Recording Industry Association of America, which is the RIAA. But for those who don't know, after leaving Jive Records though, John signed a distribution deal with Asylum for his label Ice Age and in September 2006, Jones released a single titled Mr. Jones, which is more popular for Lil Wayne hopping on the beat and doing Sky's the Limit. But it debuted at number 92 on the Billboard's charts. The song gained further recognition when fellow rapper Lil Wayne freestyled on his version Sky's The Limit for the Drought 3 mixtape, like I was saying. And on January 31st, 2007, Jones announced an upcoming EP and a movie, both titled The American Dream. On April 21st, 2007, Jones released the second single from the EP titled My Six Foe, featuring Bun B and Snoop Dogg. Although the single debuted number one on the Bubbling Under Hot 100 singles chart, the single didn't really do well overall. And on November 20th, 2007, Jones released The American Dream and it debuted on the Billboard charts at 183. On November 27th, 2007, Jones released the debut single Dropping Gimme 50 for his second solo album titled The Voice. Dropping Gimme 50 featured Hurricane Chris for what I thought it was a pretty good, it was a pretty dope track. You know what I'm saying? Uh, statistically, it really didn't do so well, but I thought dropping Gimme 50 was really hot. But anyways, on May 19, 2008, Jones released the album's second single called Cuddy Buddy, which I also thought was a pretty good song too. The single did well on the Billboard Hot 100, debuting at number 78. On December 2nd, 2009, the third single from The Voice was released, titled Next To You, which I really didn't care for, but it debuted on the Billboard Hot 100 at number 63. On April 28, 2009, The Voice was released, debuting on the Billboard 200 at number 12 and selling 25,000 copies in its first week. We've heard a lot of different rumors over the years as to you know why he fell off you know some people say it was poor money management some people said he got on drugs some notable beefs and controversies occurred in mike jones career first starting with chameleon there which mike describes as not really something serious in 2004 Chameleon had called out the rest of the Houston hip hop scene because basically he felt like they wouldn't represent the best of what Houston had to offer lyrically and urged him to improve in order to gain the recognition he believes Houston deserved. In response, Swisher House took offense and replied by criticizing Chameleon there. Chameleon there then accused Jones of slander and as a result, the first CD of the mixtape Messiah included insults directed at Jones, including the tracks You Got Wrecked, Who They Want, and Game Over. However, who? Like Jones. Jones. Yeah, I handle heat like the pizza man. You want beef, I'll unpack it for ya. Like Jones. It's a whack rapper, but he isn't a bad promoter. In late 2008, the beef between the pair had died down. Chameleon there apologized to Jones in 2010, marking an official end to their dispute. He said, live on stage from the bottom of my heart, I apologize to Mike Jones. I mean no disrespect. The more serious beef was with Trader Troop, which is another rapper from Houston Southside and a member of the Screwed Up Click, which is kind of like a rival to the Northside's Swisher House. Led to the Trader Troop beef where Mike Jones was saying that he was the mayor of the city and 
Tray the Truth basically felt like that wasn't what it was. Mike Jones never really spoke so much on the beef with Trey the Truth, but Trey felt as though they had some back and forth. And when they saw each other at the Ozone Awards that occurred in Houston, Texas, which was a moment to kind of spotlight Houston on a national scene, they end up passing words with exchange to a fight. Mike Jones still continued to put out his music, but that was something that some people felt like was very damaging to the career of Mike Jones. Some of Mike... Damn, I'm having a bitch. What the fuck? fuck? Hey, cut that shit up, man. All right, welcome back to the show, y'all. It's your boy G-Man holding down the afternoons on your radio right here in H-Town. All right, in the studio, we got another big interview going on right now. What's really good? Tell all the H-Town what it is. Fuck everyone. I'm Mike Jones. All these people should be thankful. I let them in my city. I'm the president, right? Went from the man to the president. Boss, what's cracking, cuh? Say, come here, cuh. Listen to this shit. How do you spell Houston? M-I-K-J-O-N-S-E. Houston. You hit that nigga Trey yet? Man, I'm finna hit that nigga right now. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yeah. And get your ass up, nigga. You hear this old punk ass nigga on the radio? I'm the streets. I am Houston. Man, the fool trip. And this whole ass bitch ass game be cheating like a motherfucker fool. Man, I can't even much pass this bitch ass stage. Gray. I've been doing this shit over and over and damn, man, I hate this bitch ass. Gray, guy. what fool? Get your fat ass up and fix me something to eat. I am hungry. Shit, I got this motherfucking sausage your motherfucking ass could eat. <laughs> <laughs> Two eight one three three zero. Oh. That number don't work no more. <laughs> That nigga that trip on the what city to all of these bitches around. Bianch. Hey Trey, ain't that you know who right there? Say cat. Yeah, you need to come holler at me. You know I need to get a clear understanding about all this running Houston shit. You can't tell me. The president does whatever in his city. We don't see you, you are out of town or just like they is. Nigga, I can't tell you last time nigga seen you out here. I got here. the fans to protect the president. Tell about you run shit, you the president. Get for real, man. Why well, you hate on me, man? Because I got the billy on swings? Well, I'm going to tell you like this. I'm about to take off this chain. And when I come back over here in a second, I want you to talk to me like you talking right now. No, no, nigga, where you going? can't say that's the first time I've seen that. Shit, me neither. Jones went on a hiatus. On August 20th, 2012, he announced his return, explaining the reason for his hiatus was due to financial disputes with his former label Asylum, and that money had been taken from him. Also announced that he was finished with his next album, Where's Mike Jones, and that he was working on his follow-up titled Who, with further plans to release a mixtape called Ballin' Underground 2. On October 31st, 2013, Jones will release a mixtape titled Back Ballin' Underground, where he hooked back up with DJ Michael Watts, 
and they you know tried to recreate 10 years after the mixtape that, that which originally built the buzz for Mike Jones. On August 28, 2014, during the interview, Jones would talk about his upcoming album, Where Is Mike Jones? His upcoming mixtape, Money Train, and would announce that he had signed a new distribution deal with Atlantic Records, stating, it's just a group of people who are all about making money and having money. Once people really understand what the money train is, then they'll be on board with it. On December 28, 2014, Jones released a new single titled Three Grams, featuring appearances from Slim Thug and an artist named Young Deuce from his Money Train label. On January 1st, 2015, Jones released a mixtape titled Money Train. And on February 5th, 2015, Jones announced via his Instagram he was working on another mixtape entitled Money Train Reloaded, which will be a sequel to his mixtape Money Train. In September 2021, Jones announced a new record deal with RBC Records to release his third studio album, WAP Season, in May 2022. Some of his other ventures included his acting career. Mike Jones began his acting career with a minor part in the Fox television series Prison Break as Darius Morgan, which was C-Note's brother-in-law, and in 2007, Jones released his movie The American Dream, in which he starred with much of the plot based on his life. It's good, it's good. Wait till they find out the truth, though. So, so, hey, hey, so, hey, hey. He also has his own cognac brand. Mike Jones has also been known to actively be a philanthropist. Jones has been involved in many charity programs such as his Ice Age for Kids and the American Dream Foundation through which he hosted community youth events and donated thousands of dollars to help. But yeah, this is the rise and fall of Mike Jones, Houston, Texas artist and underground legend and in his own right. If you guys like this video, hit the like button share it, subscribe, and stay tuned for more Just Like It. Here we got a Trey Hunter 600. Hey man, it's Jen Lee, Mr. Spinner, man. You gotta come tap in with Trey 600 when you're in Austin, man. No doubt. Yeah.